simplified speed time curve here it is the simplified speed time curve where i have neglected the acceleration period i have considered it to be a linear one in the the acceleration period is considered to be linear the free running is already a linear uh, period and the deacceleration is also considered to be linear period so this helps us in linearizing and linearizing the speed time curve and drawing any conclusion from it what can be the conclusion that can be drawn from speed time curve let's see we have this uh, curve which is plotted between the speed and time so if i find out the area of the curve the area would be length into breadth this will this will correspond to speed into time speed into time is nothing but the distance so actually the speed time curve is stating you is stating you what by what uh, what should be the shape or characteristics of electric locomotive to cover a specific distance let's see uh, if we try to resolve it what we can withdraw here it is the time t1 the acceleration time t2 is the free running time and t3 is the deaccelerating time where t total time is total time is the time taken by the electromotive to reach from station a to the station b it will be t1 plus t2 plus t3 the maximum speed is vm now the distance uh, total distance traveled from this point to this point will be the area under the curve the area under the curve will be total distance would be total distance would be the area of the triangle first triangle first triangle area plus rectangle area plus second triangle area the area of the first triangle would be half into the perpendicular perpendicular is vm into base base is tm so it will be t1 the rectangle area will be this breadth into height this will be vm into t2 and the area of this triangle would be half into vm into t3 so we will sum them up to find out the total distance traveled in the time interval t we will get d this would be equal to half vm t1 plus 2 t2 plus t3 where we also have a relation between t1 t2 and t3 as t1 plus t2 plus t3 to be equal to t so we can write it as also from from here we can draw the t2 can also be written as t minus t1 minus t3 we can substitute this value of t2 in this equation we will get half vm times t1 plus 2t minus 2t1 minus 2t3 plus t3 and this will become half of vm times 2t minus t1 minus t3 also suppose we have the alpha as the acceleration so this alpha will be equal to vm divided by t1 alpha would be the if alpha is the acceleration then it would be speed in the interval t1 from this we can draw that t1 
T1 will be equal to Vm by alpha and similarly I can draw T3 T3 to be equal to Vm divided by beta where beta is the deacceleration period deacceleration constant now substituting these two these two values of t1 and t3 in this equation we get so in the last slide we derived the distance will be equal to half times vm times 2t minus t1 minus t3 also t1 to be equal to vm divided by alpha and t3 to be equal to vm divided by beta where alpha is the acceleration and beta is the deacceleration or the retardation substituting these values into this equation we get d to be equal to half of vm times 2t minus vm by alpha minus vm by beta where this expression can further be solved to vm by 2 times 2t minus vm out of which I can take out vm common 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta now this is the distance I should write it d equal to vm by 2 2t minus vm into 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta this is the distance when the maximum speed of the train is known to us the train uh, the, dis, uh, the time required to travel from point A to B is known to us the acceleration is known to us the deacceleration of the train is known to us and numericals based on it may come in the university exams we will discuss further some numericals and uh, the other technique to solve the speed time curve in this particular technique we uh, resemble the speed time curve to a trapezoidal form and the next one we further simplified it and we make it similar to a quadrilateral we'll see it further in later lectures thank you